Good afternoon. I'm Preeti Ngorani. I'm the Vice President for Brand and Public Relations at Cambridge University Press. On behalf of the entire Cambridge University Press team, I extend a very warm welcome to all our panelists and greetings to all you lovely teacher educators who have made the time to join us in person and each one of you who would be viewing the recording of this session at a later date. Thank you for joining us for the launch of the series, What Really Matters? A series of timely and timely advice for educators from educators. With this series at Cambridge, we intend to curate authentic and practical advice from our brighter thinkers like yourself and take them to classroom to shape up better learning. The series would, be, would find solutions to relevant issues that education is facing today in the time of the pandemic, as well as build on the timeless learning of Cambridge and our educators. While we discuss the practical solutions in the coming weeks and months, but first things first, what really matters? What really matters is students. But what really matters to students and in classrooms is teachers and all the more motivated teachers. So the, it's so important to bring this into focus and for all teachers that what really matters in motivation of teachers. I agree there are multiple facets to this and it might just take more than tens of sessions or a number of sessions to really talk about what, every facet of it. But today uh, we will view it from the lens of professional development and teacher well-being. I am really honored to be joined by a stellar, stellar panel of educators who are equally passionate about this topic. Allow me to introduce them. Ms. Sonal Pinto, Director, Ryan International Group. Father John, Director, Don Bosco Institute of Management. Ms. Dimple Puri, Head at DLF World School, Greater Noida. With this introduction, I really can't wait to deep dive into the discussion and talk about how can we have our teachers more motivated? How can we address what they really need? But I'll take one more minute to say that uh, the way the session would continue, each of our panelists will be talking about their insights, sharing their in insights and inputs with all of us, giving us uh, good tips and trips to see uh, how we can use this to motivate our fellow teachers, to motivate our teachers in the classroom, to motivate teachers at large by community. You would certainly have questions and very valid ones which are going to shape up how the discussion goes and what happens after this. Please type in your questions in the QA session as we go along. So let's start. Ma'am, my first question comes to Ma'am Sonal. You are the director of Ryan International Group of Institutions, the largest privately held K-12 chain of schools in India. I know you're such a passionate educator and as with your passion, you are driving the group's journey towards excellence in education management. The pandemic came in, life went through its ups and downs. We all developed characteristics of water, I would say. We started flowing around obstacles rather than letting them stop us. As institutions, you've done great. We moved from traditional brick and mortar to online teaching. But on reflection, we gave no time to our teachers to think about the unique needs and the skill sets that might be required for the shift to be impactful and successful, yet they adapted. So ma'am, my question to you is, what are the, these unique needs, both emotional and technical, that are of significance in these uncertain times? Thank you, Preeti, for the question. First, I want to, before I begin, I want to thank our Lord Almighty for giving me this opportunity. I also want to take the opportunity to thank Manish, Preeti, and the entire team at Cambridge University Press for giving me, for inviting me for this webinar session. Um, as you all are aware, the global pandemic has uh, created the largest dis uh, disruption of uh, education system in history. 
affecting nearly 90 million school teachers worldwide and 6 million uh, teachers in India alone. And in the midst of all the chaos and adversity, the teachers have been at the forefront, ensuring that learning reaches their learners seamlessly during the lockdown. When schools switched to online learning, the teachers had to adopt and adapt their mindsets to new approaches to teaching and learning. With the growing numbers of COVID-19 cases, this ongoing crisis is far from over. Uh, many countries have yet to announce a date to, uh, for schools to reopen across the world. Uh, governments, school leaders, parents, and students are still grappling with when and how the, uh, to approach the next phase. Uh, many of these, um, we hear of many cases uh, of students and teachers uh, experiencing physical and mental uh, issues uh, because of the extended period of confinement. And, and in some cases, they've also lost family members during the pandemic. Uh, change is inevitable, uh, but it comes with several challenges. Teachers are completely in an unfamiliar zone with uh, learners being uh, remote spectators. And uh, the stress of being under constant observation while teaching through an unfamiliar medium uh, with new tools is least to say challenging and stressful. Uh, even the transition of online uh, classes has not been an easy task for teachers. However, uh, what has been more demanding for them is to address the issues of quality learning. Struggling to, uh, struggling to engage learners gainfully, uh, getting them to uh, respond and collaborate during lessons, uh, accessing, uh, you know, assessing and le their learning outcomes and keeping them, trying to keep them safe and in, in the cyberspace has been a great task, uh, a huge task, if I could say, uh, for teachers. And while teachers are striving hard uh, to manage, uh, they're still learning continually to improve their digital competencies and skills. Teachers are also responsible of taking care of their students' mental um, health care, uh, mental well-being, sorry. And uh, especially for those who are struggling uh, under this impact of uh, social distancing, lack of routine, absence of friends during the lockdown. And it is not easy to teach a class full of disinterested, dejected, distracted uh, young learners uh, through a computer screen. Uh, who would rather prefer to connect uh, emotionally, socially, and share their feelings rather than just learn from textbooks? Uh, counseling students and parents too is emotionally um, uh, demanding on teachers who are themselves struggling with similar issues, but they have been doing so irrespective of their stress and anxieties. Although online education cannot replace uh, classroom education due to the personalized nature of attention and face-to-face -face intera interaction. Uh, it can be an effective supplement of the brick and mortar uh, model of education. For the well-being of the teachers, the students, and school staff, uh, providing certain uh, mental health support, uh, could be workshops, could be meditation sessions, mindfulness will prove to be very vital. A uh, few suggestions uh, for teachers to, I think, uh, to maintain their well balance, uh, uh, to maintain their uh, well being, you know, to have that balance maintained at a time like this. Um, control the controllable during COVID 19. There are certain things that you simply cannot control right now, but there are some things which you can control. Focus on those things, uh, prioritize on the ones that are healthy that can help you to put your mental wellness at the center. Take time out for self-care. Uh, because while we are, uh, our core focus is on um, social distancing, washing hands, uh, preventing illnesses, uh, 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 being involved in all the uh, healthy practices. Um, but it's also important to focus on things that will help us to feel balanced. For some, it could be uh, exercise. Uh, for the others, it could be reading, um, journaling, meditation, or even uh, doing some, uh, spending some time doing a hobby. 
uh, get your body moving um, to maintain your mental health. Uh, because one of the biggest challenges for many educators during this time is how hard it is to be sedentary. Uh, the restrictions on our physical movement is causing a concern. So while you're at your work around uh, your schedule, um, set a timer to or, or create some short breaks where you can move uh, physically. Uh, maybe it could be within your house space or even within your um, uh, neighborhood. Um, be kind to yourself. Uh, we often teach our children uh, the basics of self-compassion, uh, kind uh, self-talk and growth mindset. Uh, it is also time to turn it inwards and uh, you will really benefit uh, in terms of uh, maintaining your mental wellness and you could uh, and it will also help others uh, while you do so you know um, for those who are struggling with managing uh, several things at the same time uh, you need to understand uh, there is no possible way that you can be at all things to all people at all times uh, set small realistic goals and expectations for yourself. And by doing that, uh, what you actually uh, recognize what you actually can do and what you are capable of, uh, you will, and while you do that, you will be uh, setting up for yourself much more fulfilled, um, um, you know, in terms of you will feel fulfilled and also help uh, to maintain your well-being. Uh, communicate, connect, which is very important. Speak. Uh, uh, it could be either to your colleagues or, or your supervisors or your loved ones. Uh, it's important to stay connected. Uh, express what's going on with you and, and uh, what kind of uh, experiences you're going through. Um, it's important to reach out. Designate uh, time in which students and colleagues can reach you. Uh, so that you have that uh, set of time uh, to connect with, uh, you know, in terms of your work. Uh, and also, and if you're feeling um, you're going through a tough time, you're struggling, even if it means to balance your mood, uh, you know, feeling low on energy, uh, fed up of uh, navigating through daily routines and uh, often feeling that those aches and pains uh, what we are experiencing right now is hard on all of us. Don't worry, we are all in it together. As educators, often we are in the spotlight to, to help and guide students through these difficult times of COVID-19. We need to be of the good hope and move forward, even in the shadow of doubt and uncertainty. Because by being vigilant about our own well-being, we can in turn, in turn help others. Thank you, ma'am. I couldn't agree more. One, we are all in it together. We have to move forward. And definitely we need to start looking inwards and control the controllables. I, I, I see this as great advice, not only for teachers, I think by and large for the world right now. One more thing that I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to check with you is how important do you think quality of professional development at a point like this is in the as respect of uh, teacher motivation? Um, one of the indicators of the quality of uh, professional development is teacher engagement. Mm -hmm. It is important to understand what are the needs just before rolling out the professional development that looks like a cookie, uh, cookie cutter, one size fits all. Uh, during this time of pandemic, it's become even more essential for school leaders to take a step back, reflect, review, and then redesign the way we do professional development. Majority of the teachers across the country have risen up to the occasion of wanting to improve themselves and uh, be creative and demonstrate um, qualities of being lifelong learners. In our organization, we conducted uh, many workshops and have developed training programs for the development of teachers online. And uh, 
our teachers actually have come forward and have asked for it to help them upskill. Uh, and these in-house programs were targeted towards professional and personal development needs of the teachers, continuous uh, upgrade of uh, subject needs of the teachers, better management and assessment of student transactions. So these are some of the thoughts that I can share and present and submit to you. Uh, this is something that we do with tremendous support from our uh, and encouragement from our chairman, sir and madam. And uh, we are just grateful to our teacher community uh, for really being the change they want to see in the teaching learning space, in the education space, and even in the lifelong uh, learning space. So big kudos to all the teachers. Yes, absolutely. Big kudos to all the teachers. Thank you so much for sharing the insights and the experiences that have been practically been working in uh, your schools. Great. I will now uh, bring the question to Father John. So Father John, Director of Don Bosco Institute of Management. Father, when I uh, had been studying things that you have been doing, you've been very, very influential uh, in terms of the education matters consultancy and building teacher motivation in uh, the Northeast. And some of the brilliant things that I see, you've been awarded by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, you've been awarded by, and for the best teacher award by Union HRD Minister, you have been best principal of a teacher training institute. From your experience, it is, it is you know, it, it's at the heart of the discussion, what really matters in teacher education, uh, motivation. Uh, Father, you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes, indeed uh, you thank are. You, uh, thank you, Madam Preeti. And thanks to the entire Cambridge University Press for inviting me to be as one of the panelists. I'm so happily joined by other eminent panelists, uh, Madam Sonal, uh, Sonal from the Ryan International, then Dimple Puri and the entire uh, team. And I see a huge number of participants, over 2,000 2, participants uh, engaged in this uh, beautiful uh, webinar organized by the Cambridge University Press. You're talking about Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Uh, is one of the finest teachers, finest leaders that the country has ever seen. Uh, he would, uh, in most of his interactions with the children, he would ask them, what would you like to be remembered for? And then uh, I remember he would ask uh, even his own secretary, uh, Mr. Srijan Palsi, uh, Srijan, what would you like to be remembered for? So one day he in turn asked um, Abdul Kalam, Dr. Kalam, what would you like to be remembered? And would you like to be remembered as the people's president or as uh, the nuclear scientist or space scientist or whatever? And he didn't mention, he gave four options. And Ab Abdul Kalam says, none of this. I would like to be remembered as a teacher. Imagine the people's president, a, the nuclear scientist or, or the missile man, he would like to be remembered as a teacher. I remember on the 27th of July, I think in 2015, he collapsed while teaching. The joy of being a teacher. And uh, today when we talk about uh, motivation, uh, what I can tell all those who are attending this seminar, that is the joy and privilege of being a teacher. Just imagine once you get into a classroom, you have 40 or 50 students in your classroom, the windows and doors are closed, and you are the focus point there. These 40, 50 children are gazing at you, gaping at you, wanting to listen to you, wanting to do everything that you say, uh, which in normal life, it doesn't happen. And the husbands, wives, children, they don't listen to each other as much as a students in a classroom uh, listen to a teacher. So what I want to talk about is what matters in, in teacher motivation is the very fact of being a teacher. 
you are touching lives you are influencing in the world you are building the future of this world and when you see that your students are blooming and blossoming and they are becoming leaders they are becoming the change makers they are becoming the prime ministers the presidents the bureaucrats uh, the who is who in every uh, part of the world in every opportunity there is uh, you will realize that being a teacher gives you that great joy and the satisfaction and what motivates you uh, motivates a teacher is the very fact of being a teacher that's what i first thing that i want to uh, to speak about and you know everyone needs to be motivated and what why do a teacher needs motivation now when we uh, even in the teacher uh, training colleges uh, we talk about motivation and motivation uh, two types there is the external and the internal the external motivation is uh, they get uh, they get their salary they get a job or uh, they get a certification they get awards they get recognition uh, they are publicly applauded and they have been uh, talked about as a teacher so that is a kind of external motivation uh, that uh, a person gets so that motivates so i recognize for being a teacher uh, i am called a teacher and i am touching lives etc so that is uh, the external motivation which i believe is not so lasting as the internal motivation is the called the intrinsic motivation uh, the very fact of being a teacher you see in the indian uh, philosophy or in the indian mythology they said the people the students they bow to a teacher even before bowing to god because he respects the person who has led him or her to god and that is the biggest uh, feeling that i have that the very fact of being a teacher i remember uh, george herbert palmer was a teacher in harvard school and he was asked how much are you paid george how much are you paid and george uh, herbert he said uh, if harvard doesn't pay me to teach i would rather pay harvard for the privilege of teaching in harvard i would rather pay harvard for the privilege of teaching in harvard to be teaching in any school is indeed a privilege because you are getting 40 50 or hundreds of students who are there like uh, you know as uh, sonal was saying uh, where you can shape like mortar and clay you you are more than artist you are more than anybody you can influence them you can transform them you can make them the way that you want them to be i remember la she was giving the wrong diction wrong pronunciation and i told my niece that this is wrong but she she would not listen to me though i am her uncle and i knew the correct diction and correct pronunciation the child wouldn't listen to me because she said my teacher told me uh, this is the correct pronunciation and the teacher is teaching the wrong pronunciation still the child believes that that is the correct one so that's what i'm saying uh, the teacher is is the only person that the child will listen to so imagine the influence that you are having on the child influence that you are having on anyone the parents cannot manage that or any external agents only the if the teacher says the child will do especially in the formative years the young years when the teacher becomes the hero when the teacher becomes the all in all for the child you are able to transform them and change them so think about this internal type of you know motivation uh, that very fact of being a teacher uh, today i realize that there are so many of them wanting to be a teacher because they do not get any other job they are unemployed or oh, let me try out teaching you know yeah. uh, it is of course if those of you have seen the film to serve with love uh, there is mr takare who didn't uh, he was uh, trained to be an engineer qualified to be an engineer but there was no ab job available but there was a vacancy in a school temporary vacancy to be a teacher 
So just to get a job, he went there. But within the course of one year, uh, his interaction with the children, initially he found it very tough, but he was the one who was, he was able to touch the lives of those children. So when he got the real job as an engineer, he tore away that uh, job offer and he continued to be a teacher because on the last day, I, while they were giving the farewell to him, uh, they sang that beautiful song to serve with love. What can I give you, sir, in return? Because uh, if I could give you the moon, I would go. If I could give you the, you know, anything, but I give you my love to serve with love. You know, the love, the, the adulation, the respect, everything that you get. Uh, today, that is my joy. When I see my students are uh, today somebody in society, you know, they are making great impact. So when I talk about teacher, uh, in teacher seminar, the four aspects I talk about is that the input, the input, the output, the outcome and the impact. Input is everything that the school offers in terms of the structure, the teacher learning process, all the classes, the lessons, the library, the computer, all the facilities that the school offers is the input. The output is connected. The input is good, the output, you can expect a good output, but it varies according to uh, different students. Different students produce uh, different outputs, but it depends very much on the input that the teacher gives, the school gives, the, um, the school organization, the school climate, everything that offers. So then the output comes in terms of result, in terms of their, uh, of their project works, in terms of their ability to speak, to read, to write, then come the outcome. Outcome may be the school is able to produce so many doctors, so many engineers, so many bureaucrats, so many IAS, IPS officers, and so many business people or so many teachers, that is the, uh, the outcome. But the most important thing is the impact. So what impact are these engineers having on society? What impact are these doctors having on society? Or these, uh, you know, the business people having on society? If they are unethical, if they are corrupt, if they are wrong influence, then the whole cycle becomes a problem and we will be blamed because we are the teachers. We are giving them the values, the character, everything that, uh, that is in us. So it is such a divine call. For me, uh, teaching today is, is a divine call. It, it, it is like you are leading people to God. You are leading people to a transformed type of society. If we have very poor leaders today sometimes, or uh, unethical leaders who are corrupt, uh, maybe in every, every field you find uh, much to do with, with us, the teachers, because the teachers didn't give that type of uh, you know, training or value education to the youth. So feel that inner motivation within you that I am called to be a teacher. Some of you may, may, of you may have read in 1996, way back when Dr. Shankar Daya Sharma was the president of India. He visited Oman. And when he uh, reached the airport in Oman, the person who came to greet him was the king of Oman himself. Usually the king of Oman, they say, uh, wouldn't come out of his palace. He wait for the foreign dignitaries to meet him in his palace. But in this case, the king of Oman went to the airport, not only went to the airport, he went right into the plane uh, to greet and welcome Dr. Shankadaya Sharma, the president of India. And when he led him out of the flight, he himself drove the president of India to, to the palace. When people asked him, why did you do that? because you never had this, this custom. And the King of Oman says, I did this not because Shankadaya Sharma is the president of India. I did this because he was my teacher when I was studying in Pune. You'd see that kind of adulation, that kind of respect that a, a teacher gets. So we feel just proud of being a teacher. Uh, I'm giving you some of these uh, examples because that will motivate you in, in the joy of being a teacher. Let's say the king of Persia, I, I use this example in my seminars. The king of Persia wanted to award the, the best citizen of the kingdom. 
So they uh, send emissaries to scout out, to find out the best citizen of the empire. And so they brought out many names. Uh, there were four people uh, considered for the award. From there, they would select one. The first one was um, a philanthropist. You know, a philanthropist, one who has earned a uh, lot of money, hard earned money through his own hard work or her own hard work. But he, he gives out that money for charity, for health, education. Uh, you know, so many people like Bill Gates can be called a philanthropist. Like there are so many philanthropists who spend their hard earned money for social, emotion, uh, educational, health causes uh, to reduce suffering in this world. So, and they presented this person to the king and said, my lord, the king, this person deserves the award. Second, they presented a doctor, a government doctor, saying that here is a doctor who has went out of uh, his scheduled work, gone into the villages and given free medical care, free surgeries to hundreds of people and given them uh, health care. Third one they presented was a lawyer, an eminent lawyer. And this lawyer has fought for the women's rights, the children's rights and done so much. And they say he deserves the award. And the fourth one, of course, was a teacher. And the teacher was asked uh, to explain herself. And this teacher came forward and she said just one sentence. She said, my Lord and all the eminent guests gathered here, I would like to tell you that this philanthropist, this doctor uh, and this uh, lawyer were my own students. You know, the best philanthropists, the best lawyer, the best doctors, you know, you feel that the, we are able to create the best philanthropies, the best lawyers, the best doctors, the best presidents and prime ministers. That is the greatest joy that we have. So it's what Henry Adams said, a teacher affects eternity. No one can tell where he saw her influence stops. As uh, Sonam Ma'am said, you know, in this pandemic has kept us on, on, a, on the back foot, uh, but nothing can replace the teacher. We may have a uh, hundred uh, ways of uh, reaching out to the students, but that emotional connect, the teacher and the student, that influence that we are having, that we are able to touch the lives of the future generation, that uh, you know, we are seeing the future with our very eyes. When I look at my children, I'm seeing the future of the world. I'm featuring the future of the country and the future of medical care or everything. So uh, as I give you my uh, remarks today, uh, what I want to tell the entire uh, gathering of uh, teachers out here, feel proud of being a teacher. You know, we are forming, uh, we are the world changers. We are the people who are touching lives. We are the people who are going to shape the future of this world. Feel proud and keep yourself upgraded. As uh, Sonal very beautifully said, we have to grow in our profession. We need to have that growth mindset that we need to keep reading, keep updating. APJ Abdul Kalam said, a teacher is a walking encyclopedia. He or she is a fountain of knowledge. He is a reservoir of you know, resources. Uh, he or she is, is a fountain and the kind that we can you know never be uh, uh, good enough for our children because we have to keep growing keep updating keep improving and get self motivated that i am uh, the one changing lives changing this world thank you thank you father this has been so overwhelming and heart touching. Every word that you mentioned, I, I'll say I'm not a teacher to many, but it uh, impacts me to see that we're today talking about teachers who are building the future. So they are the creators in many which ways. It's, it's really heart touching and so inspirational what you shared with us today. Thank you so much for your insights. We're privileged to hear from you. Thank you. Right. So, um, if I might uh, just bring in this factor that motivation is so very much important, as his father rightly said, it comes from within. We have to build it. But there also is, there is a reason that if 
people around you or the stakeholders around you do not motivate you enough, you cannot fulfill your dreams and intentions. You need that just one little nod to do things that you really feel passionate about doing. I invite Dimple. Dimple Puri is the head of school at TLF World School, Greater Noida. She's been teaching, she has an experience of over 21 years in teachings from class six to 10 and has been recently awarded by the CVSC with the CVSC Award 2019 for our innovative classroom practices by integrating SDGs into the curriculum. Dimple, you often, I often see you writing at the Cambridge Teachers of Tomorrow platform, talking about uh, a lot about life empowerment, teacher empowerment. Now, uh, it'll, motivation is also cultural. It brings in the factor of where we are, what really matters to us, which part of the world we are in. If I bring back the focus on in India, and which says, you know, on Teachers Day, we are all so excited. Every child is excited. Parent is, teachers, of course, are. And that day is so special for many, many reasons. We think about teachers who have taught us in the past, teachers who are in the classroom. And the main highlight of the day is that teachers really feel valued, appreciated, and respected. We agree that teacher being feeling valued is really, really important. And we do not need to worry about motivating them. Now, uh, from your perspective, what is it that school leaders and we as a community can do to give that little one nudge to teachers to make them, you know, really feel valued and appreciated and do our bit in motivating them? Yeah. Um, a very warm good evening to uh, the entire Cambridge University Press and the teacher educators and the eminent panelists. Uh, just briefly introducing about uh, my career that I have just taken up the role of a school leader. It's been one year only. And all these uh, 20 years I have worked in an institution, a par excellence institution with a par excellence mentor. So. I would just begin by quoting a very personal and a small experience and anecdote that in my present school, one of my teachers, she went for a professional development program. And in the evening, when she called me, I asked her that, did you take your food properly? Could you reach your home on time? Could you take, did, did I hope your children did not suffer because of your late, uh, you know, reporting to whom. So she said that, ma'am, this is absolutely strange because we have been listening from all our mentors that uh, about what did you learn and how would you like to transact the further uh, sessions. But this is something amazing. So you know what I returned her back, I said, that dear Susnita, this is what I have got from my mentor. So taking a clue from this, um, uh, thank you, uh, Universe, uh, Cambridge University Press for having me here and inviting me as a school leader to share my personal experiences of how I have been valued upon and how I am further giving that motivation to my colleagues. So I am just sharing my screen. Just wait. Uh, there's a technical glitch. Can you please bear just ma'am? I'll share it for you. Uh, you can just let me know.
Yes, we can see the screen now, ma'am. Yeah. Dimple, ma'am, you can just uh, unmute yourself and whenever you want me to change the slide, I'll do that for you. Okay, so change the slide, Riddhima. Riddhima, can you please change the slide? Yeah. So uh, before I begin my presentation, I would like to draw the attention of my audience towards this small poster created by one of the students of my school during the special occasion of Teachers' Day this year, that in a matter of no time, the brick and mortar buildings that we have loved as our alma mater is undergoing change and shrink. The corridors have fallen silent and no more the sounds of laughter emanate from the classrooms and the school playground. But for my appreciation, my teacher is not someone who is confined to the four walls of classroom. For me, you are my teacher and you are my superhero who has stepped to connect with many of us in heralding a new way of education. You are creating a history by preparing not the road for children, but the children for the road. So having said this, with so much of stakes in the aftermath of this crisis, let me take an opportunity as a school leader to turn the appreciation into the fuel that will restore the prestige of the teaching profession. Next slide, Ridhima. Ridhima, can you change the next slide? Yeah. So the big question for today's webinar is that what really matters in motivating the teachers? Is it salary? Is it recognition, job opportunities, competition, holidays, passion? I think the answer is much more that. So having enlisted all these key factors in mind, the big question, next slide. The greatest uh, positive motivation is to develop a school climate, which is very positive and motivated, and it is very critical to the effective school functioning. In other words, what I mean to say is that a school environment plays a paramount role in predicting the effective motivation of the teachers and its smooth functioning. Next. So as a school leader, what should be our priorities to build upon the teacher motivation? For the school leaders, it is very pivotal to know who the teachers are, what do they need, what motivates them, what challenges them, and how as an organizational culture, you as a school leader can support them. Next. So, in other words, there's a famous quote by Alexander uh, Gerald that uh, people feel people chase success at their workplace, which means that they feel that they will find happiness if they are successful. But if you analyze it, the truth is that happiness at workplace will only make one successful. So as a school leader, personally, I feel that school is a vibrant and attractive place to work for the teachers. And the key factors in fostering these ideas are effective leadership. So as a school leader, I practice servitude. I practice servant leadership where I believe in the philosophy of not taking charge of myself, but taking charge of those who are actually to be taken care of, that is my teachers. I make them feel valued, recognized, so that they become more productive and take extra mile in working for the efficiency of the institution. I give them a feeling of belongingness, so that they give more time, more energy, more inputs towards the attainment of common goals. The school management at my school is very cooperative in listening the ideas and giving a lot of autonomy to work and express so that there is no confusion within the teachers. 
we provide professional opportunities for growth and learning from to time to time and we also give individual recognitions because these individual recognitions can only help the teacher to aspire and inspire herself or herself himself or herself and achieve the best and last but not the least having listed all these factors we try to create a safe and supported conducive learning environment for the teachers to nurture their innate talents and abilities next so teaching as i've already said is a very rewarding profession which has a very meaningful impact on our students but do we really think that only the salaries and the monetary gains can only give us the impetus to work harder i personally don't think so and therefore i am suggesting some other ways than the monetary benefits which are as follows the school leader can have in house promotions for the colleagues which itself is an endorsement of their increasing worth that means if the teacher is capable from time to time you can give promotions in the capacity of teaching department or portfolios then you should acknowledge the work good work of your staff in the meetings and conferences nominate the name of the competent teachers for seminars conferences presentations appoint them as school representatives program managers in various events send them for school exchange programs visits support them to be trainers and consultants like the way when i was in previous school i was nominated by my principal as a british council school ambassador award a letter of appreciation for their constant work and that has to be very timely whenever a teacher performs something nice a timely appreciation has to be given and you should not have a delay for that next to create a difference in their job profile after self appraisal sessions usually schools sometimes they do make a delay of uh, conducting the appraisal sessions but this is very mandatory and very essential and recommended because the self appraisal appraisal sessions are itself a very beautiful platform of giving constructive feedback for the strengths and weaknesses and the areas of improvement for a teacher to help in getting their work published as writers and here i would like to specially commend uh the tot platform of cambridge teachers of tomorrow uh because uh, at my school i am i myself was recommended by my mentor and i am promoting my colleagues to write at this platform because it uh, really voices out the teachers choice voice and opinions uh which are recommended in the education sector taking the feedback and upholding the suggestions of improvement in school services uh, the school management has to be very flexible they have to provide autonomy to teachers to voice out their opinion because till now we have been only talking about the self directed learning and students choice and voice but as sonal ma'am said that teachers voice and vo uh, teachers choice and voice is equally important you have to introduce them to visitors guests with commandment for their work once uh, people come for the campus visit you must select your choicest colleagues to uh, make them visit uh, in the campus featuring them on the school website and blog giving them a break even extended vacation or sending them on the trip and listening to the suggestions when there is a dilemma so these are certain suggested ways where apart from the monetary gains such kind of uh, you know uh, actually such kind of things they give lot of impetus towards the motivation of the teacher next ridhima can you please switch over so uh, this is these are some of of the glimpses you can see the professional development programs are going on in my school where the teachers are having peer learning 
they are uh, getting the professional learning networks made and so on and so forth next so uh, now coming to uh, the teacher motivational uh, strategies in this new normal of online teaching learning environment these are some of the strategies which i have been practicing uh, personally to upgrade the skills of my teachers to boost their morale and to make a substantial streamlining procedures sops in my school so some of the teacher motivational strategies i would like to uh, comment upon here that sometimes it becomes very difficult for the principals to do a substantial amount of work and then uh, transacting it to further colleagues but yes cutting down the amount of paperwork Uh, reducing the number of limiting the number of staff meetings really boost up the morale of the teachers because this is a time when the teachers are doing lot of creativity earlier there was 6 to 7 hours of stay at school but now looking and learning for the new online tools actually it is taking lot of you know uh, toil on the teachers so limiting the number of staff meetings and for this as a school leader what i do i have tried to streamline my procedures my timelines and my deadlines which the staff really appreciates i usually conduct weekly uh, staff meetings i have monthly recognitions in the regular staff meetings and these are very uh, beautiful forums in which i spotlight the uh, weekly monthly good work uh, best practices and professional development charters of my colleagues a uh, significance of classroom observation is of uh, pertinent importance to all of us so most of the classroom observations are unscheduled but i make sure that when i leave the classroom i try to put a positive sticky note in the chat box to motivate my colleague and the class and then coming to the feedback which is very sensitive i try to talk one on one to the teacher select here we have a concept of selecting a worthy teacher of the month and the nomination comes from the teachers cohort itself a group of teachers nominate one teacher for the good work which she has showcased during a month and the next month the other group of teachers will nominate the other teacher and subsequently there is an a lot of impetus and motivation amongst the team to back the worthy teacher of the month award uh, to make them acquaint with the school history we usually conduct quiz um, and we did it on teachers virtual teachers day celebration then we celebrate the birthdays of our colleagues virtually and we also encourage peer learning by promoting professional development uh, programs we accept the requests of all our uh, colleagues and we promote and then uh, during the our meetings we set aside the timings and sessions for micro teachings next so these are some of the glimpses in which our teachers have been uh, felicitated by the children uh during the virtual teachers day celebration uh, at dlf world school the students gave the certificates the titles and my best teacher why do i love you and so on and so forth next uh so this slide uh, is very close to my heart and i am going to talk about an exemplary teacher motivation which i have personally experienced it's been just 15 days that i had received cbsc award and my mentor dr ashok pande from alcon international school uh, the very next day he had sent me uh, with these felicitations on the behalf of entire alcon family so here i would like to quote that recognition and encouragement are the force multipliers distance is just in the mind if your mentor is really an incredible leader that thrust of motivation will always remain in his heart and in your heart next last but not the least i personally believe that whatever you give it comes back to you 
so i have always received teacher motivation and i am in the process of transacting it further to my colleagues because only happy teachers can nurture happy classrooms so thank you so much this was all from my side thank you ma'am those were such useful insights and Preeti, you've gone on mute. Sorry, I'm really sorry for that. I was saying thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, these insights and tips will become handy for many educators. And the inspiration that you have received and you keep continuing with, with your teachers, many of the other educators will be able to reap the benefit, make their modifications and continue with the tradition of motivating their teachers. I'm very conscious of the time and such brilliant discussions always make us uh, lose track of time. But uh, let's take a few questions that we can. Uh, we, there, there is one question and Sonu ma'am, I'd like to address this to you and father, if he might like to add something. Is during this pandemic situation through virtual classes, sometimes say a teacher would feel that, hey, I'm not up to the mark. How to cope up with this kind of a feeling and situation? If a teacher uh, feels, uh, you know, she's not up to the mark, and, um, and not confident enough to present uh, for her class. Um, I think what will help is um, the support uh, from the team, from the, uh, the principal and the set of teachers. Uh, and also if uh, a mock demo can be uh, presented by the teacher um, and, and, and give her uh, constructive feedback. Uh, I think uh, that will help her in, in correcting, uh, you know, uh, measures in terms of the areas that she needs to improve. And also while doing that, uh, constantly motivating and encouraging is the key. Uh, be it for the principal to do that for her teachers, her entire team, because that is something when you, when you stay positive, when you stay motivated, uh, that gives the teacher uh, the boost uh, to go forward and, and, and uh, what you think looks difficult, what looks uh, like a challenge, uh, you can easily overcome. Thank you. Yeah, completely agree. There, if there is intent, you will overcome the challenge. And the question was framed very nicely that there is so much of intent there. Uh, Father, one next question is for you, which talks about, are there any particular two techniques that you would like to leave us with saying that these are really useful for teacher motivation? I think the techniques shared by uh, Dimple Puri after, I mean, she, she's an awardee. I think so many beautiful techniques that she has given us. Uh, she also rightfully said the head of the institution, uh, he, he has to give motivation to uh, his teachers. You know, in many times, the, the head of the institution, uh, every school teacher will wait for the principal to applaud that teacher. Of course, sometimes the, the head of the institution has to play so much of uh, uh, politics to some extent, or others will feel jealous and so, but internally through, uh, you know, through a message, through a card, uh, through a phone call, you can always appreciate. Sometimes in public recognition is good, and if it causes so much of jealousy in others, but there are so many ways in which, uh, you know, praise, appreciation, a pat on the back, a thumbs up sign, uh, a, a small incentive, everything paves a big way for motivating the teachers. Uh, just like we motivate our students, uh, just like the teacher needs to be motivated, encouraged, uh, or entrust them with uh, the children communicated to me, uh, that you are doing well, that uh, the, whatever the good the teacher is doing, we have to communicate to them. Uh, we have to communicate to them one way or other, so the teacher feels acknowledged that she is valued, she is praised. Uh, I had a system in which when I was in Anthony's school, Shillong, 
every day i had the opportunity to meet my teachers every day when they signed the calendar i would put the put the attendance register across my office so they had to walk through my office to sign the book uh, i had a chance to ask them how are you uh, how is your family how is your uh, children or husband if somebody is sick that kind of a connect which motivates them. you begin they begin the day well when they feel that the head of the institution is really behind them and motivating them uh, i come from a society called the don bosco society don bosco had a very beautiful technique uh, everyone in the don bosco institute the don bosco schools uh, felt that uh, he or she was the best friend of don don bosco was his best friend every child is not one child or two children everyone feels if the principal or the head of the institution can uh, make this feeling for towards all teachers all teachers should feel that the principal uh, loves them and cares for them or every child feels the teacher loves them and cares for them everyone is a favorite not one not two i think this all will motivate uh, the the teachers as well as the students Great. Thank you very much, Father. I already see so many uh, comments resonating the words that you have just said. I'm really conscious of time and I would like to take the privilege of thanking you for sharing such wonderful insight in such beautiful words. It is the impact that you leave behind and the panel has been just absolutely fantastic and wonderful. I would say uh, when we talk of how you relate with people, the empathy that comes in, it is so prime. And I'm sure each one of our teacher educators who have joined us would take away something from this session. And I do hope that these are usable tips that they could use for their peers in their schools. And of course, if they have any questions, they will be writing back to us, which I will bring back to you for you to answer. Thank you very much for your time. I will also use the opportunity to let all our viewers know that we will be summing up this discussion. And because there, there's such uh, you, useful suggestions that have come in, such practical tips that are there, these need to be curated. And that's what we are there for. So we will be putting this together in, it could be infographics, presentations, or mailers that would be reaching you so that you have it handy for whenever you feel the need to use them. This is absolutely timeless advice. When we started with what really matters, it was timely and timeless advice. This absolutely in every which way is timeless. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you to all our viewers. We, of course, will have so much more coming in when we talk about what really matters. And as you saw today has been a lot of practical insights and tips for us. The next one, that uh, we are hoping to come back to you with is more uh, teacher and subject specific. Our next session is planned around what really matters in bringing computational thinking in the classroom, which would be because the NEP has spoken so much about computational thinking, we thought it's something new. Let's see why are we doing it in first of all, and if we are really doing it, how do we do it? And this will again come back from great educators like the ones that you saw today, we will be in touch talking about uh, when this is scheduled. Uh, today's session, I'm sure many of us would like to recommend to other peers and this would be available as a recording very much there on Facebook and you would be receiving a link which allows you to view this. Also, really would request you to put in your feedback. There will be another link which asks you how was the session? Real words coming from you, that will be practical feedback for us. We will factor that in and you can give us suggestions that what really matters to you. This is an ongoing series and we will ensure that what really matters on ground is the topics that we bring for discussion. And we have great panelists like we have today sharing their insight. Thank you very much and have a good evening.